chapter number 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. And once you have found it, let's all stand as we read the Word of God this morning, 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. Everyone standing as we read God's Word, verses 1 and 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. If you have it, give me a good strong amen. Amen. Scripture says in verse 1, Now we beseech you, bre- we beseech you brethren. The word beseech, he's just saying, I beg you. I, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not, what? Soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. I want to take these two verses and that little phrase, Paul says, that you be not soon shaken. Mm. I want to take that phrase and I want to talk to you. you, I want to ask you, are you falling apart? Mm. Are you falling apart? And I want to help us this morning. Father, I pray that you'll help me in these next few minutes as I preach thy word. Society would like to get us to fall apart. Satan would like to get us to fall apart. But your word tells us not to be soon shaken. God, I pray in these next few minutes I can help some people who are going through some things that are trying to shake them up. I pray that they would, they, they would listen intently in the next few minutes, please. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. People say to me, Preacher, I have anxiety issues. And I say, What do you mean by anxiety issues? Anxiety is when Alabama's losing. Somebody help me out. (laughs) Anxiety is when OU loses. That's a lot more this year. I'm just saying, just saying the truth now. Um, anxiety. We, people say, I got anxiety issues. I'm shaken up. I'm, I'm, I, I, everything around me, I'm just getting nervous about everything around me. And I say, why are you all shaken up? What, what's causing the anxiety? Right. Addictions are at an all-time high. Because people are trying to deal with their anxiety issues with drugs. And can I tell you, Drugs, I want you to listen carefully to this statement. Drugs does not resolve your anxiety problems. Anxiety, the drugs only puts a camouflage over it, but the problems are still there, and the problem can be solved with the Lord Jesus Christ. We get people that say, well, I want to, I got to, I got to drink some alcohol every night to calm my nerves. I have found the one who can calm my nerves is Jesus Christ. Those who are once addicted to alcohol can tell you that the alcohol does not calm your nerves. It makes them more raw when you get off of the, of the high of the drug or the alcohol because it's just destroying your life. Preacher, I have anxiety issues. I, I, I'm unstable. My child is unstable. I, I'm an, I have an unstable mind. We look at society. Society is highly unstable. Right, right. Hardly a week goes by that we're not reading about somebody shooting someone, someone stabbing someone. Um, Just society is an unstable society. But what do you expect when we push God right out of society? We've got to understand you can't push God out, the one who stabilizes everything and expects society to be stable. You've got to keep Christ as the central focus of your life, of your family, of our church, of society, if we're going to have a stable society. Paul says, he says that ye be not soon shaken in mind. That word shaken means this. It means to vibrate or quake. I grew up in California. We had earthquakes out there. Earthquakes don't bother me as long as they don't go over a certain amount of time. 
I was in the earthquake in 1989 where the, where the bridge collapsed there in the San Francisco area. I was in that earthquake just north of the, I was about 30 miles north of the bridge when that earthquake uh, hit, and that was a long earthquake. They said it lasted 20 seconds, but a lot went through my mind in 20 seconds. I can tell you that right now. Just, it shook up the whole, the whole state, and that shaking, God, that's what Paul's saying. He says, don't let your, don't let your mind, he says, let you be not soon shaken in mind. Don't let your mind be earthquaked. Don't let your mind be vibrated. He's saying, don't let it be wobbled. You with me so far? You ever watch some people that uh, sometimes they're older, they get a little wobbly on their feet, and they're having a, maybe they have to get a walker, and they have to get a cane, and they, to keep them stable right there in life. He's saying, don't be wobbly in life. He's saying, he's saying, don't wait. He says, don't go waver from side to side. He says, don't be that mind. Get your mind stable. Don't let it go, swing to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. He says, don't be soon shaken in mind. Now, what does that word um, soon mean? It means quickly. In other words, he's saying this, slow down. Slow down. He says, he's saying, don't, okay, can I put it this way? Don't jump to conclusions. He's saying, don't get, don't react to what's going on inside of life. Get your life where you're stable, where you're not reacting to everything inside of life. You ever been around somebody that just reacts about everything? The news media. Every time there's something you think that, you think there's a nuclear war about ready to happen because they're going off. And can I say this, mom and dad, be careful about being that one that always flies off. Your teenagers want to live in a stable home that mom and dad are not flying off all the time. They need some stable parents that can take the brunt of the blow of what's going on in life and that mom and dad are stable. We have got to have some stability inside of our society and our homes. They need to see that. He says, be not soon shaken. Now, you'll notice what he's saying is this. He's saying, that he says, he's saying, stop letting things suddenly cause you to be quaked, to be vibrated, to be wobbled. He says, when trials come, don't let trials wobble you. When health, when, you, when the doctor says, I need you to give me a call, don't be shaken by, I need you to give me a call. Boy, we let our minds think and we get, we get soon shaken in mind and we imagine, oh, the world's going to come to an end because the doctor wants to talk to me again. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Don't be soon shaken. Now, what he's saying is this. He's saying don't be soon shaken in mind. I want you to follow me. I want you to circle that phrase in mind. He's saying you are not shaken but you think you're shaken. You with me so far? He says, be not soon shaken where? In mind. He says, you think you're shaken, but you're not shaken. Let me illustrate if I can. Um, in, in an airplane, when you fly, you have something you call vertigo. And when you're flying an airplane, when I learned how to fly, they, that my instructor taught me, he says, don't fly by the seat of your pants. He says, you fly by your instruments because you get in the clouds. He says that, that turning in the clouds, there's, there's fluid in your ear. It's kind of like a level. And he says, he says, when you're in the clouds, because your eyes have no horizon to see, he says, you get sensations that the plane is doing something that it's not. So what they do is they begin to train you. They put what they call a hood on you. So the only thing you can see are those instruments. And my instructor, he said, now, Alan, close your eyes. He'd turn that plane. He did, He would go a left turn, right turn, up, down. He would do that for about two minutes. Then he'd say, open your eyes, fly the plane. Now, my job was not to react on what I felt the plane was doing. My job was to immediately look at my instruments and say, okay, this is the attitude that the plane is in. This is how our, this is the yaw of the plane. It's, it's starting to turn left. Got to correct that. We're going, well, maybe we're going down a little bit. Got to correct that. He says, let the instruments do not, he says, do not let your feelings fly. He says, because you'll kill yourself. You ever hear a pilot talk about he saw trees in the sky? Let me help you out. If a pilot ever says that and he wants you to fly with him, don't fly with him. 
That means he's turned the plane upside down. He thought he flew by feelings, turned the plane upside down, and what he thought was up is down. Because he flew by his feelings. Many times I've been in an airplane and I feel the plane is doing something, but I can't see. I can't see. I have to trust the pilot who can see. I've got to sit there and say, I can't see it, but I'm going to trust the pilot who can see what's up there. I can't sit here and be soon shaken. I watch people around me, and because I'm a pilot, my mind starts going a little bit when something's happening in the airplane, but I watch people around me, and I see people, boy, they start grabbing, they start white-knuckling that, that seat right there, and they're hanging on. Oh, that turbulence is, you know, bad, plane's barely moving. Oh, bad turbulence. Oh, this isn't bad turbulence. You haven't flown with me yet. I'll give you some turbulence. Now, now why? They, they're soon shaken. Soon shaken. Now, God says, he says, don't be soon shaken in mind. Don't let your mind get unsettled, get disturbed by what's going on. If I could put it this way, he's saying, he's saying now what you've got to do, he says, he says, don't let your feelings run you. So I'm saying this, what he's saying, if you're going to make it in life, he says, don't be soon shaken in mind. Keep your mind stable. He says, then you can, you can make it through life without being shaken up. Now, let me give you several thoughts on how to do that. One, don't let, okay, one, don't let your feelings run you. Don't let your feelings run you. Let me illustrate. Come here, Brother Vince. Brother Vince, is that a tie-on? Did you tie that on? Take the tie off. Take it all the way off. All right, Brother Caleb, can you come here a second? Tie this around his eyes so he cannot see. Yeah, we want, we're gonna, I want to shake him up just a little bit. I want to explain what being soon shaken is. Are we, are we tied up there? Make sure he can still breathe. <laughs> can you see? How many people are standing in front of you? Okay. Now, this is what soon shaken is. We're going to turn him around. Just, we're going to keep on turning you around. Yeah, there you go. Just keep on turning around. Keep on turning around. Keep on turning around. Keep on turning around. Yeah, look at this. Yeah. Now, I want you to take a walk. Yeah. He's soon shaken. Hey, watch out. This way. Soon shaken. <laughs> Did you feel wobbly? What did it feel like? A little wobbly on the inside? See, that's what Satan does. Satan just kind of turns. Keep on turning around. Satan, he's going to be sick tonight. But Satan just keeps on turning our life around. You with me so far? And gets us where, where everything inside. Now take a walk. Take a walk. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just take a walk. Yeah. Running by feelings. Running by feelings. You see, that's the way. Just wait. Just stay right there for a while. You're going you're gonna to be my feeling man for the whole sermon. Now, now, now get this now. That's where a lot of you are. Right. The doctor comes and says, oh, you got, you got something wrong, and you he, and he turn around. You get a bill from the IRS, you get turned around. You get, you, you get a bigger bill on your car, you get turned around. Your job is, getting, is, is losing, losing, um, um, losing um, time, you get turned around. Your finances are getting low, you get turned around. Gas prices going up, you get turned around. Children getting mad, you get turned around. Husband doesn't like you, you get turned around. Wife doesn't like you, you get turned around. And you're running, trying to walk by feelings, Go ahead, try to walk. And uh, yeah, try to walk by feelings. Don't know where you're going. You feel a little wobbly on the inside. I'm saying what you've got to do is stop walk, living by feelings inside of life and understand those feelings will lead you wrong. Amen. Yeah. Hey. Amen. Hey. That's good. We're wobbly. Amen. He's a little bit wobbly right now, are you not? <laughs> Why? Depending on feelings. Depending on feelings. Yeah. Well, it feels this way. It feels. That's why he's moving around. He's trying to, he's trying to correct. Thank you. You can go back to You take the tie off. and Yeah, there you are. You don't know where you are, do you? You okay up there? Just be careful. There's a guy in front of you. Don't get sick on him. 
Now, how do I, how do I keep from, my, from falling apart? One, don't be run by feelings. Second, get rid of sin. Amen. Get rid of sin. Listen to me. Sin is a destabilizer. It destabilizes your life. You cannot live in sin. You cannot commit sin without it destabilizing your life. Now, you say, preacher, you're always talking about sin. Yeah, somebody's got to. Because sin does destabilize your life. At some point, we've got to say, I have to get the sin out of my life so that way my life becomes stabilized so that way I'm not walk, I'm not soon shaken in life. Oh, let me tell you, thank God I have a God. See, sin is a destabilizer, but righteousness is a stabilizer because righteousness is truth and truth never changes. Amen. Come on now. Amen. That's good. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Amen. I know. I know that up is up and down is down. Left is left and right is right. That's a truth. And I know God's word is true from Genesis to Revelation. That's the solid the truth that I have that I can depend on God. Amen. But I get, I get over here and I start living in sin. And listen to me, that's why some of you, your life, you, you say you have anxiety problems. No, you have sin problems. Get rid of the sin in your life and you'll find the anxiety will start disappearing. Amen. But you can, listen to me, you cannot keep on adding the sin to life and think that, well, I'm going to be okay in life. No, it destabilizes life. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Third, don't let outside circumstances dictate your frame of mind. All right, now. Amen. That's good. Don't let outside circumstances dictate your frame of mind. Now listen to me. So you say, preacher, what do you mean by that? Okay, so I don't let the outside, that's what he's saying, soon shaken in mind. Now why are we shaking in mind? Because we're letting the outside dictate what's going on on the inside. Okay. So I, I, I have a, okay, it's a cold day. Oh, bad day. It's a warm day. Oh, great day. It's a cloudy day. Oh, bad day. The sun is shining. Oh, great day. Listen to me. If I let outside dictate what I'm doing, I will be up and down so I cannot allow outside circumstances to dictate what's going on. I can't. There's a steak. I just heard that ringing. But anyway, listen to me. Hey, listen to me very carefully. I can't control what everybody else does. So because I can't do that, I can't control the weather. I can't control the news. I had, sir can't control Washington, D.C. So I'm not going to let them dictate what I do in life. Not going to. I've got to say, okay, I can't, what well, I cannot control, I'm not going to let that dictate what I do inside of life. Amen. Amen. Too many times we're letting that which we cannot control dictate us. Listen to me. I can't control what my wife does. So I cannot let her dictate my spirit. Somebody help me out. And ladies, you can't dictate what your husband does. So stop letting him dictate what's going on the inside. Teenager, you can't dictate what mom and dad are doing. So stop letting them dictate your spirit and stop letting everybody else dictate your spirit and say, okay, I've got to get a solid source to determine where my mind is stabilized on. If I let my son-in-law dictate my spirit, I can't control him. I can say I'm his boss. I can try to dictate, but at the end of the day, I cannot make him do exactly what I want. He's his own individual. I can't control him. I can't control my daughter. She's my secretary. And neither can her husband. But anyway. (laughs) Amen. But anyway, yeah. You'd be good. She's sitting right over there. Now, listen to me. I can't control. I can't control the choir. If I say choir, I want you all to shout amen every day. When I'm preaching, I want you to get excited. Only one. Oh, I'm depressed. I'm depressed. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. You're letting people. I cannot control Mr. Vince back there. Can't even put his tie on. 
I can't control Miss Lynn back there. Oh, oh, she's just always a grumpy person. Can't control, sorry, but I can't control her. No, listen to me. I can't control outside. I can control inside. So I say, okay, I'm not going to let this thing control my mind. I've got to stop being up and down. Listen to me. Stop wobbling around in mind and get stable inside of life. Amen. Hey. Yep. How do I keep from falling apart? Focus on the unchangeable on the inside. I find there's some things that never change on the inside. If I'm saved, my salvation never changes. That's right. Hey, amen. I'm saved today. I'm saved tomorrow. And I'm saved till the day I die. Somebody help me out. That's one thing. I don't care if the Cowboys lose. I, I'm still saved. It doesn't matter if the Alabama Crimson Tide doesn't make the playoffs. I'm still saved. Somebody help me out. Doesn't matter if Republican or Democrat owns the White House. Hey, I'm still saved on the inside. Doesn't matter who controls the House or the Senate. I'm still saved on the inside. Doesn't matter what society does. I'm still saved on the inside. Doesn't matter what my in-laws do. I'm still saved on the inside. Doesn't matter what my spouse does. I'm still saved on the inside. Hey. I can focus on that which does not change. My salvation never changes. Amen. Never. Oh, I wish I could get people to understand there's some things I can focus, focus on that never change. Hey, salvation never changes. God's word never changes. Amen. God's word never changes. Oh, listen to me. You get inside of this book. Why? This book does not change. Amen. I read when I was a kid in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I'm 54 years of age and three times this year, I've read in my personal study, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It does not change. God's word is an everlasting word. That never changes. Amen. Amen. So if I'm going to focus my mind on something, I want to get it on, I'm saved. Doesn't matter what they do to me, I'm saved. You can lock me up, I'm still saved. You can tell me I can't talk to anybody, still saved. You can tell me I'm gonna die, still saved. You can tell me, hey, hey, no one loves you, still saved. You can say, well, the world's gonna forsake you, still saved. That's not all. God's word never changes. So every morning I go to this book, I get inside of this book and I read God's word. What am I doing? Stabilizing my mind. Stabilizing my mind. The reason why some of you are not stable, the only time you get Bible is on Sunday morning when we come in here and we read the scriptures together. That's the only time. That's not going to stabilize your mind. Amen. Amen. That's right. Yeah. I look at Miss Glenna back here. Just buried her husband this week. But in church... Joyful, smile on her face. Is she grieving? Absolutely. But how? This book. Yes, sir. Amen. This book never changes. Right. This book is always right. right. It helps me in the good times. It helps me in the bad times. Never changes. Amen. 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 What are some things I can put my mind on that never change? Salvation never changes. The word of God never changes. The promises of God never change. Amen. You see, aren't the word of God and the promises of God the same? They are. But I just want you to understand his promises are still good today. Call unto me. And I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Hey, hey, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hey, I know he's always the same. Hey, thank God. I know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Hey, that's the promise of God. Amen. I know for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That was a promise before the world was ever created and it's still a promise today. Hey, it never changes I'm saved. 
And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. No man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I am my Father. I what? I can look at that. I can be secure that I'm in the hand of God today, just like I was that night, June 21st, when I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ to save me. He put me in his hand, and I'm still there today, and I'll be there tomorrow, and I'll be there until the day I die. Amen. Unchanging promises. Amen. 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 That's good. How do I keep my mind from being shaken? Can I say number five? Stay in rhythm. Mm, okay. Stay in rhythm. You say, what are you talking about that, preacher? One of the reasons why I'm preaching on this sermon this morning. We've just barely gone through Thanksgiving and a lot of people got out of their routine. Christmas time is coming. People get out of their routine. She said, Preacher, why, why don't you just change the services on, the, on Sunday morning, Christmas Sunday? Because we're not going to get out of rhythm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. One, church, Christmas is about Christ. Amen. But I can't get us, because why? One time out of rhythm. Is what puts us right back to where we were. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. My father-in-law, he jokes with my wife. He says, "He says Alan's just a person of routine. He don't, he don't like getting out of routine." He's absolutely correct. Amen. I feel out of place when I'm at, when I'm get a little bit when something changes up. Get, I, it just kind of, I just get a, I just get a little bit uh, uneasy right there. My routines. Can I tell you? Christmas time is coming. Christmas season's here. Watch out. Hey. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Keep your routine. Stay in church. Yes, Amen. Amen. Sunday morning. Sunday night. Right. Wednesday night. Don't miss church. Amen. Hey. Can I tell you? Don't miss your Bible reading. Amen. Can I tell you? Don't miss your prayer time. Amen. Can I tell you, don't miss telling somebody about Jesus. Can I tell you, stay in your normal clock routines. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes. We sleep in Thanksgiving Day. And then our whole day's messed up. Because we didn't read our Bible. Didn't pray because we slept in. A day that's supposed to be about giving thanks to um, God. Yeah. Amen. Thank you for helping me out. I couldn't figure that out. I know you all think I'm a machine at times. Same time every day. 4.30, whether it's Christmas time, whether it's the middle of the year, I don't matter what the day, if I'm on vacation, I get up at 4.30. You say, why? Stay in a rhythm. I don't want my mind to be soon shaken. I've got a routine. I eat breakfast same time every day, same breakfast. You all know what my breakfast is. It's the only breakfast that God commands in the Bible. Two fried eggs. Cooked in bacon grease. Somebody help me out. Amen. Yeah, get three, get three slices of bacon, not the kind you can read through, some thicker bacon. Fry that bacon. Get some bread and put some, put, put a, put, have a little bread with the butter that you put on it. You'll figure that out later on. And that's my, that's my, that's my, my wife will say, well, do you want anything else for breakfast? No. No, don't need it. Routine. Stable mind. It's something that keeps me going. When my world around me is shaken, I got to keep my mind stable. When the world around me shakes, I don't say, Where's the beer bottle? Yeah, come on. My Lord. Where's the drug? My Lord. Yeah, go ahead. I say, where's the prayer closet? Here we go. Yeah, that's it. Hey. 
Where's the word of God? Yes. What's, ne what's next in my schedule? Amen. Amen. Stable. Stable. When inside of me, I feel like my whole world is wobbling. I stay focused on that which never changes. And then God says there's one other thing that keeps you focused, keeps your mind stable. Stay focused on Jesus returning. Amen. Jesus returning. Hey, he's coming again. He's coming again. I got news for you. Jesus is going to come again. You say when? I don't know, but I know we're closer. Let me tell you something. Preachers have forgotten to talk about Jesus coming again. Jesus is still coming again. And I'm telling you, if you're not saved, you're going to, you'll, you'll die and go to hell and burn in hell forever. Hey, you better get saved. Amen. Jesus is coming again. Amen. 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 Hey, preach, Pastor. That's good. Yeah. And because he's coming, I stay focused on him, his return. When life around me gets pretty hard, I can say, yes, but Jesus is coming. Amen. Amen. Jesus is coming again, coming again, coming again. Maybe morning, maybe noon, maybe evening, and maybe soon. Huh? How about it? Amen. Coming again. Amen. And I stay focused. And I say, well, if all else fails, I'm going to stay in my routine until Jesus comes. But I know he's coming. Amen. I know he's coming. Yes. How did Stephen, how did Stephen handle his world being shaken up as he stoned to death? He looked up. And he saw Jesus and said, I'm waiting for Jesus to come. Instead, Jesus says, won't you come on up here? Right. Amen. Yes, sir. Hey. How did John handle the loneliness of the Isle of Patmos? Most people go crazy when they're all alone, but he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Got caught up into God, got caught up into heaven, and then at the very end, he said, even so, come, Lord Jesus. He says, I can't wait for Jesus to come. I can't wait. Not looking for the undertaker, looking for the upper taker, looking for Jesus to take me to heaven. Oh, he's coming again. Yes, yeah. Are you shaken in mind? Are you wobbled? Come here, Mr. Wobble. Just close your eyes this time. His life turning you around. Just keep on turning. His life turning you around. Come on. No, you don't want to go backwards. You need to go forward. Come on. Don't be peeking. Don't be peeking now. You're a little wobbly there. Let me tell you what, while you're wobbling, why don't you hang on to my arm? Amen. Jesus is coming. I know you're wobbly. Hang on to the arm. Just hang on to the arm. You just walk with God. Hang on to the arm. And while you're wobbly, you can have a stable mind. You can have a mind that's not shaken, that has turned you around. Stay focused on Jesus. If you're here this morning, you're not saved. You're going to have a hard time not being soon shaken because the one who soon who stabilizes me lives on the inside. That salvation, it never changes. Get saved. Start serving God. Stay faithful. And this holiday season, I'll tell you this, and I'll probably be done. I used to work for the coroner. Busiest time of the year to pick up dead bodies between Thanksgiving and Christmas. More people die between Thanksgiving and Christmas than any other time of the year. You know why? Soon shaken. Soon shaken. Let's make this a great time of the year that we're not shaken. We're steady. No matter what we face. Stay focused. And others around are going to say, how do they do that? And you say, I got someone on the inside who's the rock who never changes. His name is Jesus Christ. That's how. Father, thank you for what we've heard this morning.
a little truth, Lord, that so many times we become soon shaken with everything going on. The doctor calls, we're shaken. The bills come in, we're shaken. Um, the economy's tanking, we're shaken. The gas prices rise, we're shaken. We watch the news, we're shaken. We hear bad things about family, we're shaken. God, help us today. Oh, God, help us today to be not soon shaken. Heads are bowed. Isaac.